How's it going everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today is something different, something we haven't done on the channel before. Conspiracy theories. You may have been told that conspiracy theories are simply made up, fantasy, urban myths. But what if I told you that the theories in this video are more fact than fiction? In this video I'm going to give you my top 5 conspiracy theories. What makes a really good conspiracy is of course proof, and these theories will have a bunch of them. But also, why? Why would the government want to lie? Why would the government cover that up? I will try and shed answers to these questions, as well as providing further resources to the topic. These theories I'm about to give you are considered gateway theories, the theories that appear simple in itself, but can become more complex the deeper you search. Remember, the theories in this video are chosen by me. These are the ones that I find fascinating and unbelievable. So on that note, let's get into it. Number 5. Secret Societies This conspiracy is rather vague. The theory is, a small group of individuals control the world. They control the banks, economy, technology and healthcare. This theory comes in the form of many names. The Illuminati, the 1%, the New World Order. This theory may sound far-fetched, but really think about it. Government elites overseeing social and political aspects. The truth may not be as straightforward as you believe. It is said the New World Order uses religion to control the population. The idea is, large amounts of people can be held in check by belief systems and a hardcore conspiracy theorists believe the New World Order uses mind control and fear-based propaganda to manipulate the population. The truth of the matter is, secret societies do exist. Freemasons, for example, a well-established group. What is their purpose? Friendship? Brotherhood? Maybe. But other groups such as the Skull and Bones, a Yale fraternity, members include John Kerry and both President Bushes appear to breed the political elite. This theory goes deep. The more you read, the more you're convinced. I recommend you checking out The Trillion Dollar Conspiracy by the late great Jim Mars. Number 4 on my list is the September 11th attacks. One of the most touching conspiracies on this list. The attacks of September 11th 2001 have been surrounded by controversy since the minute it happened. Many people have disputed the government's involvement into 9-11 from miscommunications to creating a false flag attack giving them reason to start a war. Before we point fingers, let's go back to September 11th, 2001. We're told 19 Muslim extremists hijacked planes with box cutters and subsequently crashed these planes into the World Trade Center buildings in New York. But how do we know this? Officially we're told this by Barbara Olson, a CNN commentator who was on board one of the planes. We are told she called her husband, Ted Olson, Solicitor General of the United States, appointed by George Bush. But wait, she couldn't use her cell phone as the technology wasn't available yet. We also discovered the flight Barbara was on didn't have access to passenger phones. But then how did we know what happened? Well, one of the hijackers' passports was discovered at the scene. Seriously? No black box, but a passport survived the crash? Standard protocol during airplane investigation, all located materials is placed together to undergo full examination. Then why was the remaining material of this crash transported overseas? More questions than answers I'm afraid. 19 of the hijackers were all from Saudi Arabia. So why did the US attack Iraq and Afghanistan? On the 21st of September 2001, the Taliban offered to hand over Osama bin Laden if the US could provide proof of his involvement. Osama bin Laden has denied responsibility on multiple occasions. Even Bin Laden's most wanted file on the FBI website didn't mention the 9-11 attacks and an FBI spokesperson, Rex Toome, stated it was because there was no evidence on him. The videos of Bin Laden taking responsibility for these attacks are up for debate and maybe require their own separate video. Questions have also been asked about the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. Where's the footage? One of the most secure buildings in America and no video evidence of the plane crash. The only footage we have is a blurry image of something white coming across the right hand side of the screen. This is simply not enough. The smoking gun for all conspiracy theorists is Building 7, also known as the Sullivan Brothers Building. This building was not hit by any planes, yet it collapsed at free fall speed. But how? Another strange piece of evidence fueling this conspiracy is BBC reporter Jane Stanley reporting on the collapse of Building 7 while it stands intact behind her. 30 minutes before its eventual collapse. Well, how is that explainable? The question why, 
Why would the government want to do this? Was it to create a false flag attack, giving them reason to attack Iraq and Afghanistan? The truth of the matter is, the US benefit financially from war. Would this be a good enough reason to start a war? After the attacks, all planes in the US were grounded. But why was Bin Laden's family allowed to leave the country? Why wasn't their plane grounded? If you want to know more about the 9-11 conspiracy, and believe me, there's much, much more, check out Dale Avery's documentary, Loose Change. I highly recommend it. Number three on my list, UFOs and Area 51. This is the mother load of conspiracies. The topic can be short or endless. It all depends how deep you want the rabbit hole to go. From sightings, abductions, to potential alien crashes, and everything in between, UFOs are now embedded into American history. The holy grail of the UFO conspiracy is Roswell and Area 51. In the summer of 1947, a ranch worker discovered a cluster of debris on his ranch approximately 30 miles from Roswell, New Mexico. Initial statement from the RAAF said it was a high altitude weather balloon. However, this simply didn't end there. The Roswell Daily Record describes how the RAF captured flying saucers on ranch in Roswell region. The attempts of government officials to brush this under the carpet hasn't been successful, and this conspiracy has only gathered in momentum in the last 70 years. Area 51 Located in South Nevada, 83 miles from Las Vegas, Area 51 is possibly the most secure place on the planet, which only adds to the mystery surrounding the conspiracy. Security at the base is high, signage around the property provides deadly force is authorised against trespassers. Conspiracy theorists would say Area 51 is a military base in which alien technology is tested and alien bodies from UFO crashes are brought to. In 1989, a physicist called Bob Lazar claimed he worked at Area 51, Sector 4. He claimed he worked and was in contact with alien technology and he witnessed alien spacecraft. A lot of people have disputed Lazar's story. However, in interviews in 1989, Lazar details an element known as Element 115, which was of alien origins. In 2003, the element 115 was supposedly discovered and added to the periodic table as muscunium. Bob Lazar's story is an interesting one. Whether you believe him or not, it's fascinating. A documentary directed by Jeremy Colbert details Bob Lazar's story, which is available on Netflix. Lazar and Colbert make an appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast, which is a very compelling watch. His biography is being written by former Blink-102 frontman Tom DeLong. The government have always denied the existence of Area 51 for decades, until June 25th, 2013, when the CIA publicly acknowledged its existence, following the Freedom of Information Act request. Former Canadian Defence Minister Paul Heller confirmed the existence of extraterrestrial life. He also admitted there are several different species, and they have a not involvement action against the Earth, but they visit Earth and have contact with world governments. There's no smoking gun in this topic, but a hell of a lot of content, which I would highly recommend you check out. Alien Agenda by Jim Mars is the best-selling UFO alien encounter book of all time. Maybe this can open your mind to the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Number two on my list is really out there, but I'm asking you to give it a chance. Did Hitler escape after World War II? As the story goes, Adolf Hitler, the Fuhrer of Germany, killed himself on the 30th of April 1945 with his wife Eva Braun in his bunker. Their bodies were brought outside and burned beyond recognition. Dental works performed by the Soviets confirmed the bodies were of Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun. But wait, where's the conspiracy? So for that, we need to go back to that day in 1945. A BBC reporter who arrived at the bunker with the Soviets said they found no body that could have been Hitler's. Soviet general agreed and they also say they found an escape tunnel in Hitler's personal quarters. DNA expert Martin Bignacki was given access to the remains and he confirmed they were of a 40 year old woman and it couldn't be Eva Braun as she was in her 20s. So what proof do we have Hitler died in 1945? Well none actually. The Nazis had close ties with high ranking American officials, most notably Alan Dulles of the OSS. The Nazi ties of the US goes deep, for example IBM were directly involved in the Holocaust. Chase Manhattan helped fund the Nazi party. The list really goes on. So if the Nazis were to pull us off, they had the right friends in the right places. The theory goes, Hitler escaped through a tunnel leading to the German underground system. Flying to Denmark, 
into Spain and from there a submarine taking them to Argentina at which they were submerged for 53 days. But remember, during this time the Nazis had bases at each of these countries and at that stage they were still in operations. At each stage of this complex chain there is first hand testimonies of eyewitness accounts. For example, the pilot that flew Hitler out of Germany, Peter Bangard. Peter Bangard was trialled in Poland 1947 for being a member of the SS. He detailed his involvement in Hitler's escape. The judge thought he was mad and sent him for six months psychiatric testing. After six months, he was then trialled again, declared sane and sent to prison, during which his story never changed. He was released in 1951. TWA manifest details Bangard's flying to America and his destination, the State Department. He was never heard from again. Reports would suggest he was given a new identity. The Americans have done this before with thousands of rocket scientists and technicians under Werner von Braun. Ask yourself this, would Hitler, with all that money and connections, simply kill himself? The question of why would people cover this up is simple. Hitler had a lot of friends in high places. Then why Argentina? Well, there's a strong support for the Nazis and Germany in Argentina. It is the only place I say Germany which has its own Nazi party. The influx of Germany before and after the war paved the way for entire speaking German towns. Recent declassified FBI documents show millions of dollars being spent searching for Hitler after the war in South America. Did the Americans simply want to close the book on Hitler and focus on their next enemy, communism? If you're interested in this theory, I recommend Greywolf, The Escape of Adolf Hitler by Gerald Williams and Simon Dunstan. Number one on my list is as clear as conspiracies go, the assassination of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. It was November 22, 1963, Dallas, Texas. President Kennedy, his wife Jacqueline, Texas Governor John Connolly and his wife all ride through the city in an open top motorcade. And at 12.30pm, while the motorcade is driven through Daly Plaza, President JFK is shot. Bullets ring out, and at 1pm JFK is pronounced dead at Parkland Hospital. A former Soviet defector and supposedly communist sympathizer, Lee Harvey Oswald is accused of the killing, as well as the killing of Officer J.D. Tippett. When arrested, Oswald denied involvement and referred to himself as a patsy. Before a trial could take place, Oswald was shot and killed by nightclub owner Jack Ruby on the 24th of November 1963. The Warren Commission, which was set up to investigate the assassination, concluded Oswald acted alone and that one bullet was responsible for the injuries on both President Kennedy and Governor Colony. This is known as the single bullet theory or the magic bullet theory. So where does the actual conspiracy come from? Well, I'm not a bullet expert or a medical expert but one bullet causing all them wounds coming out pristine on the other side. That has to be magic. Not only that, multiple if not majority of witnesses say they heard shots coming from the grassy knoll which was directly facing the president's motorcade. The autopsy reports say the entrance route came at the back of the head. Wrong. All doctors and nurses at the Parkland Hospital have said that the official autopsy report was altered. The entrance wound was actually at the front of the head, not at the back. Aubrey Wright, an ambulance driver who took JFK to Parkland Hospital, said that he physically picked up the president and the back of his head was falling out, indicating the shots came from the front. Was the Warren Commission lying? Is there proof the shots came from the front? Yes. This is known as the Secruder film, recorded by Abraham Secruder at Daily Plaza. The strange thing about this film, it wasn't shown to the public until March 1975, almost 12 years after the assassination. Though the Warren Commission saw it, it never allowed the American public to see the footage. But why? Because it clearly shows the President's head move back and to the left, meaning the shots could not have come from the Texas Book Depository, directly behind the President, where Lee Harvey Oswald was located. Are we saying that Oswald was innocent? Well, maybe not. Reports have suggested Oswald was a low-level intelligence operative, it has been confirmed that the US had false defector programs. It was also confirmed that Oswald received foreign language training in the military. If Oswald was, as the Warren Commission said, a lone gunman, then why can't we see his tax returns? A coup d'etat requires a patsy and no trial. If you continue to research this topic, the name David Ferry will appear.
During the trial against Clay Shaw, David Ferry was reportedly going to testify, confirming the government's involvement in the assassination. Before any testimony could take place, David Ferry was found dead from an apparent suicide. This wasn't the only untimely death in this conspiracy. Journalist Dorothy Kilgallen was granted the only interview with Jack Ruby in his jail cell. Afterwards, she was stated to say, I'm going to crack the Kennedy case wide open. A week later, in her Manhattan apartment, she was discovered dead. Suicide. If you still believe this is a simple conspiracy, then why did President Richard Nixon and his famous Watergate tapes say the Warren Commission is the biggest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people? You may think, 60 years on and still no confession, but you're wrong. A deathbed confession by E. Howard Hunt, a former CIA operative, he declared the government's involvement in the assassination and he details the list of commands starting with Vice President Lyndon Johnson. He stated it was referred to as the big event. Hunt is a credible source, having decades of experience with the CIA, most notably the Bay of Pigs. Another confession which you may have missed, former Mafia assassin James Files. Files has taken responsibility for the crime, giving specific details surrounding the assassination. Files, now in jail for murder, says afterwards he would bite the shell casing. And years after the assassination, a shell casing with human indentations was discovered at the picket fence at the grassy knoll. The question around this conspiracy, why? Why was Kennedy killed? Kennedy was vocal about ending the war in Vietnam. He wanted a friendly relationship with Cuba and the Soviets. It has been confirmed that Kennedy was having secret meetings with the Soviets to end the Cold War, and Castro before passing stated the assassination was an inside job. Kennedy had distrust of the CIA, given what happened at the Bay of Pigs. He's been quoted to say he wanted to smash the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it into the wind. JFK was on the road to peace, and what would the world be like today if he was able to? If you wish to research this theory more, I recommend Crossfire, The Plot That Killed Kennedy by Jim Mars. With this conspiracy, we tend to forget a life was lost. A husband, a father, a brother, a son. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was taken at the young age of 46. May he rest in peace. I hope you enjoyed this video, but remember, these theories have been researched and studied by myself. I would advise you to do the same and come to your own conclusion. Thank you.